A beautiful piece of furniture can be treasured for generations. Every single item in this salvage haven has a past, a present, and hopefully a new home awaiting it. But what connects them all, however unassumingly, is a chain of design know-how that stretches back through the centuries. Each table, chair, even a humble chest of drawers owes a debt to the craft and design ingenuity of those that came before. And in the right hands, the techniques used by artisans of the past can create and inspire the furniture of the future. A brand new gallery at the V&A aims to celebrate these techniques and reveal the many different ways in which furniture is actually made. To the untrained eye, it's often easier to be seduced by the surface than the secrets underneath. But with over 200 diverse pieces on display, this exhibition presents an explosion of ideas and innovations, ranging from a three and a half thousand year old Egyptian table leg to pieces constructed by a 3D printer. I've invited four design graduates in the Royal College of Art to come and explore this collection and show me how some of the remarkable pieces here connect with what they do. Charlotte Kingsnorth turns her obsession with voluptuous female forms into striking chairs. Perhaps no surprise then that the upholstery section of the gallery has caught her eye. So what's so fascinating about this chair? Um, well, this chair is a replica of this, which was made in the 18th century in England. It just shows what lies beneath the silk I material see, on top. You can see all the guts. You can see beneath. Yeah, you can see the guts lies. spilling out. So how does seeing all of these different works from all the different periods, how does it sort of inform your work? Looking at each of these chairs, you know, I'm always thinking, oh, how could I just rip it apart and, <laughs> and, and you know, maybe still use the same body parts, but, uh, you know, rejumble it and, and create a new chair. Oscar Wanless and Atua Aparicio work together as Silo Studio and have a unique approach to casting, using one-off material moulds to create quirky tactile pieces. Here they've been drawn to more traditional examples of their technique. So, Oscar Atua. Hi there. You Hi. pick casting. Which bits have you picked out of all of these? We picked these two chairs. Why in particular these two? This one, because it's a very old way of molding metal. This technique was it's been in use since the Bronze Age. What sand, is casting? sand casting. Right, well, and, what, and how does that work? Sand casting. Sand casting essentially is it, it's like making a sandcastle in reverse. So you have a hole which is made of sand, right. and then you pour liquid metal into that hole. And when the metal's cold, it has the shape of that hole that was made in sand. But we've also picked this chair as well because this shows kind of like a change in technology when this is made. Wood is controlled because it's at the end of the war. Aluminium is not controlled. And so there's, it's an abundant kind of industrial material. And they were, they were making metal casings of aluminium using die casting, which is a metal mold rather than sand now, which means that you can get many standardized objects. Um, and that means you can make multiples uh, very quickly. So how do these two chairs connect with what you do and how you work in casting. One thing that we really love about the, both these materials is they really show how it's been made. If you have a little bit of knowledge, you can see that they've been pressed into sand or that's been die cast. And that's something we really try and show in our work, is to show how it has been made. Our last designer is Sam Weller, who started his career in the pioneering world of industrial design. But his love of natural materials led him away from the computer and into the workshop. So it's somewhat ironic that he's been transfixed by the most cutting-edge object in the whole exhibition. So Sam, you've picked digital manufacture. Yes. The great future for design, or so I keep hearing. Yes. So why have you picked this piece? In comparison to a lot of the other objects here, this is very much the most contemporary piece for me. How does it work then? You'd build a 3D model in a virtual world on a computer, mm. and then you essentially print that with, with this machine, which um, consists of a bath of resin, which reacts to ultraviolet light. Each layer of this um, is, is, is built over the course of time, and it steps down, and what, what you're left with is this um, solid object. It's like magic. I mean, to me, that yeah. just sounds like magic. I imagine people at home listening to this, hold on, they're printing stuff out of liquid. Yeah, but I think it's a pretty incredible um, technology. In amongst the array of futuristic and more traditional furniture on show here, I think there's one really unexpected piece that these young designers have overlooked. 
Ta-da! Exciting. It's her piece of good old-fashioned IKEA furniture. What do you think? I mean, should it be here? IKEA is probably in most homes across the country, and so it's very relevant. I mean, I think the downside of IKEA furniture is that you buy it because it's cheap and you're furnishing a new flat, and then when you move on, you've got a bit more money, you, you know, people chuck them away. But it's an important point that, you know, it is actually about designers' fashion, and it is, you know, a lot of it's kind of very cheaply done. Really, you do throw you know, it away. It's, 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 you know, to design a piece of furniture that you would hand down in generations, that's something that I really like, look at and aspire to. Well, listen, thank you all very much for opening my eyes to some of the techniques. And thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah.